Hello, my name is Jonas. In this tutorial, I will show you how to create a HDR video in Final Cut Pro using an HDR capable TV or monitor and a USB C to HDMI adapter. But before we begin, remember to like and subscribe, that's highly appreciated. Now, what's quite amazing, which I learned from DP and director Mark Toya through a post on Facebook, is that you now can output an HDR feed from Final Cut Pro to your TV or external monitor without having to purchase any expensive equipment. The only thing you need is an HDMI connection or USB-C to HDMI adapter that supports HDR metadata. I guess you could also make this work over a display port with an HDR capable computer monitor, but it's not something I tried out myself. So let's start with creating a new library. By default, this will be set to standard, which means the Rec. 709 color space with a regular SDR gamma. If you create a new project, you can see that the option to change color space isn't available. To add to create a project in HDR, you also need to set the library to white gamut HDR. So if you change our library's color processing setting to white gamut HDR, and then create a new project, you can now see that the option to change color space has become available. Here you can both create a project in SDR, in the regular Rec. 709 color space, and also in the wide gamut Rec. 2020 color space. You can also see that we have two options for HDR, which both are in the Rec. 2020 color space, using either the PQ curve for HDR10 and Dolby Vision, or HLG, which is more of a live broadcasting standard. As you can see, we can't choose any other color space than Rec. 2020 to go with HDR. For example, Rec. 709, which I often use, or P3D65. For this project, let's choose Rec. 2020 PQ. Before starting to grade in HDR, let's import two clips that I graded in DaVinci Resolve earlier, just to see that it works. I have one clip of Ibrahim playing with some fire, and also one of my recent videos, Spring Water in HDR, The Lake. The first clip with Ibrahim looks very good on the laptop screen of a MacBook Pro which also supports HDR playback to a certain extent. I don't know how well to come through on YouTube with the screen recording, and if you take a look at the next clip, it doesn't look as good as the previous. You can clearly see blown out highlights, which is due to the limitations of the laptop display. To solve this, go to the top right of the viewer, press view, and choose show HDR as tone mapped. This will roll off the highlights, so they can be seen on this particular display. Another very important part of color grading is the scopes. If you go back to the same menu and press Video Scopes or Command plus 7, we get a nice waveform monitor with a luminance scale from 0 to 10,000 nits, which is the total range of the PQ curve. This waveform monitor also represents the human visual system well, since we are more sensitive to low light. And when working with the PQ curve, half of the bit values of the video signal are placed in the 100 nits SDR range, which, as you can see, takes up half of the height in this particular waveform monitor. So, what's really awesome in macOS Catalina is that you now can output an HDR feed over HDMI, which also works in Final Cut Pro. To do this, you will need an HDMI connection that supports HDR, and for my MacBook Pro, I bought the Belkin USB-C to HDMI adapter, which costs 50 bucks in the Apple Store. Check out my previous video to learn more. Earlier, to make this work, I believe that you needed a professional and much more expensive I.O. box, which could cost you from 1000 to 2000 bucks. Now, with native HDR support in the Catalina operating system, you can get started with HDR grading for a lot less, which I think is great. So, after connecting the HDMI adapter and HDMI cable between my laptop and TV, I simply go to Preferences, Playback, and choose my TV in the AV output. Here you can also select Show HDR as Tone Mapped. But when monitoring my TV or on a grading monitor, I want to output a clean, unaltered signal, so I'll leave this box unchecked for now. When I play back my clips, they look very good on the TV, and everything seems to be working as it should. If I press up on the remote and hit enter, we can also see that the TV is in the HDR mode, 
and also displaying the Rec 2020 color space. Now, I'm no expert when it comes to color grading in Final Cut Pro, but let's bring in an ungraded clip and try it out. Here's a shot from a Blackmagic Pocket Cinema Camera 4K. The video was shot in log, so let's start by applying a LUT to the clip and normalize it. I kind of like the exposure, but I think we could make the highlights pop a bit more. So let's put up those to like 20%. I like how this looks on my TV. But let's also adjust the colors a bit by going to the color wheels. And lowering the white balance and also the tint just a bit. The foliage now looks a bit more green and less yellow. I could play around with a few more adjustments, but I'm happy for now. So, once done with the HDR video, exporting is no different than exporting a regular SDR video in Rec. 709. Although, you have the option to add HDR10 or ST2086 metadata to export. This is done by selecting the project in the browser and click on the Share Inspector. I don't have these values for this particular project and I don't think that Final Cut Pro can generate either Max ELL or Max FAL metadata, but they aren't really essential for exporting a working HDR video. I'm going to select only the clip I just created, hit X and export it as a master file. As you can see, we get a warning here. And this is because the video codec is set to H.264, which is an 8-bit codec. And when working in HDR, you want to export your videos in 10-bit. So instead I'm going to select the Apple ProRes 422HQ codec. And as you can see, the warning disappears. You can also see that the color space is set to wide gamut HDR, Rec 2020 PQ. This information will be added as metadata to the file. So when you play back the video, it will be recognized as an HDR video. And the same applies if you upload it to, for example, YouTube. Finally, I'm going to hit next, save, and that's it. So, I hope some of you found this tutorial helpful. If you have any thoughts or questions, please leave a comment below. Also, remember to like and subscribe for more videos. Thanks for watching, until next time, goodbye.